and welcome to Surfing the Solar System at the Edinburgh Festival. My name is Lucy Hawking. I'm the daughter of Professor Stephen Hawking. Now, for those of you who don't know what he looks like, I've brought him along. Here he is. This is my handy pocket-sized dad. Of course, what this really is, is this is a model made of my dad taken from his cartoon character when he appeared with The Simpsons. As I'm sure you know, my father is a scientist and he works on theoretical physics. This means that he looks for ways to explain the universe around us using the laws of physics. Now, physics can explain many things to us, including the path of planets and the life of a star. And in a few moments, we're going to be speaking to him live and you're going to have a chance to put your big questions to him. Now, the reason we're here in this tent today is to talk a bit about a book I've written with my father and a French scientist called Christophe Galfard. The book is called George's Secret Key to the Universe. And we'll be talking a bit more about George and his secret key to the universe a bit later on, as well as finding out how astronauts go for a swim, what it feels like to be weightless, and would it be nice to go for a walk on Mars. Now, this is kind of a worldwide premiere, and actually we could almost say it's a galaxy-wide or universal-wide premiere of something. It's a new game that we've developed. It's only for the Edinburgh Festival. We're never going to be doing it again. It had its first test run on Sunday, and today we're going to see if we can do it even better. Who wants to be a cosmic billionaire is the name of our game, and I am now going to ask you, the audience, if you'd like to give me some questions. Um... How much is Stephen's IQ? How much is Stephen's IQ? That's a really good question, and you know I'd like to know the answer to that one as well. So we're going, Shannon's taking down the questions for us. Is there only one solar system in the universe? Why isn't there any uh, air in the solar system? Um, do you think there's only life forms on Earth? How did the Big Bang happen? How did the Big Bang happen? That's a very big question. <laughs> we may not be able to get a complete answer to that, but we'll see what we can do. OK, we're going to be phoning through now, hopefully to my dad live at home. And hopefully he hasn't gone out. Never happens on the TV show, does it? Hello? Hello there. Hello, Dad. This is Lucy calling you live from Surfing the Solar System at the Edinburgh Festival. I'm here with the kids, and they have some questions for you. Hello. This is Stephen Hawking. How can I help you? Hooray! Can we have a big cheer for my dad, Stephen Hawking, live again? Yay! Dad, I'm with the kids, and they've got some big questions for you. So I hope you're ready to take them down and get working on the answers. Here we go. Question one. Why isn't there any air in the solar system? Question two. How did the Big Bang happen? And question three. Do you think there are only life forms on Earth? Now, Dad, I've got a question for you personally to ask you. I just want to know, Dad, do you want to be a cosmic billionaire? I am one already. Oh, yay. So a big cheer, big hand for my dad, everyone. Thank you. And as I said, the clock is now ticking. So we're going to get on with our talk, and then we're going to be calling you back later. Excellent. Now then, has anybody here ever been in an asteroid storm? What have you been doing with your time? I can't believe it, kids these days. All right, well, let's try it. I've got some space rock here, so let me just see if I can... So give you a th see, here we are. <laughs> okay, look, last. Now then, cosmic billionaires, cosmic billionaires, cosmic billionaires. We must press on. We've got such a lot to get through. And before we get to the next bit of my talk, I want to tell you about something I did this summer. This summer, I went to the USA, where I went on a zero-gravity flight. Now, this is the same flight that my dad had done a few months earlier. 
And here are some pictures from our trip. That's me. <laughs> That's me again. That's my dad. Now, when we're on the Earth, the reason that we don't just fall off or start flying around in the air like that is because of gravity. Gravity was first discovered by a man called Isaac Newton, who realized that all objects fall towards each other or are attracted to each other. And the bigger the objects, the stronger the attraction. As the planet Earth is the biggest thing around here, this means that everything appears to fall towards the Earth. So what does it mean when you're in zero gravity? Zero gravity is the term used to describe what happens when you get far enough away from the Earth or any other large object like the Sun to escape its gravity. If you're in the middle of deep space, for example, you might be in zero gravity. Now obviously, on a zero gravity flight, you haven't actually got time to get all the way out into deep space and all the way back again. So what happens is the aeroplane creates a zero gravity environment by flying a parabolic course. Now that sounds quite complicated, but it isn't. Let me show you with my lovely easy jet plane. Um, the plane flies up like this, goes over a curve and then drops down quite sharply towards the Earth. When you're inside the plane and it's dropping towards Earth, you're falling with the plane and this has the effect of putting you into a zero gravity environment. Now, if you're like me and you've spent all your life on planet Earth, although maybe you haven't, I don't know, have I got anybody here who's ever visited another planet? Have I got anybody here who's actually, have I got any aliens in the audience? <laughs> Excellent, give yourself a big hand for coming so far, thank you very much. You'll know all about this then, you'll know all about this bit. People like me, who've lived all their life with the Earth's gravity, it would be a bit of a shock to suddenly find yourself like that. So, the first parabola, or curve, that you fly isn't so steep. And what it does is it puts you into the same sort of conditions of gravity that you'd feel if you went for a walk on Mars. Although I have to tell you, it wouldn't actually be very nice to go for a walk on Mars. The average temperature is about minus 60 degrees. Now, the search for a planet on which we could live is one of the themes of George and his secret key to the universe. In the book, George's friend Eric, a scientist, is seeking another planet in a different part of the universe where human beings might be able to live. Eric is searching for what we call an exoplanet, and that's a planet in orbit around a star that isn't our sun. Eric is looking for a planet that might resemble the planet Earth in terms of its size and its distance away from its own star. So it's kind of exciting stuff. So, now you know a bit more about what travelling in space is really like. And you also know that at the moment, we can't really go that far from planet Earth. The furthest that human beings have so far travelled is the Moon, which is 260,000 miles away from us. But you also know from our billions that we did earlier, that that's not really so far. In modern times, increasingly powerful telescopes are allowing scientists to look further and further into the cosmos. Today, the Hubble Space Telescope is in orbit around the Earth. And some of the images that the Hubble Space Telescope has sent back to us are not only incredibly beautiful, but they've also allowed scientists on Earth to confirm theories that they've developed about outer space. What you here see here is called the pillars of creation. These are pillar-shaped cosmic clouds made of hydrogen and dust which contain undeveloped stars. But it isn't just through looking through telescopes either that we've learned so much about our cosmic environment. There's another way.